Today, I'll be locking Isaac Clark in a room with up to 15 necromorphs, including a brute, and see how he fares. Hello and thank you for being here, and welcome to My Wife Is VMC. I'm DMV and you're watching Husbando Homebrew, a show where we take pop culture to pen and paper. In this episode of Husbando Homebrew, I'll showcase a 15th level homebrew artificer subclass based on Isaac Clark from the Dead Space series and see if he can survive a bunch of other homebrew necromorph stat blocks. First things first. First, I reduced the HP of the Mook Necros deliberately since they already have the advantage of greater numbers. Also, high numbers plus average or higher HP makes any combat a real slog. Still, I make sure not to make their HP any lower than their minimum possible value to preserve their challenge rating. This is actually by design as mentioned by Jeremy Crawford himself. I'll link the video in the description so you know what I'm talking about. Second, I built Isaac as a 15th level artificer using the engineer subclass that I created. While there are more optimized ways to kit a 15th level character, I ultimately made the choice that fits Isaac's mold as much as possible. Lastly, for this encounter, I was pretty much just playing with myself. <laughs> uh, let me rephrase that. I was, a uh sangulating this build and put it through its paces pretty much on my own. Given that there was so much to adjudicate and nobody else to bounce off of, expect that I might miss out on a rule here and there. Anybody who points out the most number of missed rules in the comments gets a shout out in the next video. Bonus points if you point out stuff I miss from my own homebrew. My ultimate goal for this homebrew is to be able to give you and your DM enough content to be able to make your own Dead Space themed adventure. Before we begin, it'd be great if you dismembered that like button with your plasma cut there. So then, will Isaac come out on top, or will he fall and be made whole? Let's find out. Isaac enters the massive and abandoned atrium. His unfortunate luck makes his entry quite a bit more bombastic as the entire area goes on lockdown due to quarantine. He suddenly finds himself locked in with numerous necromorphs in the immediate vicinity, hungrily looking in his direction. Isaac rolls initiative and gets a... 14. Isaac spots a worrying pair of glowing pustules across opposite distances. Both exploders immediately move closer towards him. In the meantime, four slashers aggressively close the gap, stopping only to spit caustic bile at Isaac's direction. Each one rolls for attack. Natural 1, 11, 13, and natural 20. Three globs of acid dissolve in transit, but one slasher gets lucky and grazes the armored flanks of Isaac's shoulder. The slasher deals 16 acid damage. The armor sizzles and rusts slightly at the edges, but nothing Isaac can't shrug off. Isaac doesn't waste any time as he overclocks the power nodes of his force emit. He moves to a position to capture as many of these creatures as he can within his power tool's mini singularity, sighting all four slashers and one of the exploders. He pulls the hard trigger of the industrial equipment, conjuring a localized orb of gravitational energy. All targets will now make their strength saves. 15, 17, 9, 12, and 9. Some of them are close to his DC of 18. Isaac deals 10 force damage, while the charged power nodes add an additional 9 force damage. The slashers manage to maintain some semblance of intact musculature, but the exploder is violently compressed into a twisted mass of flesh. Its pustule, however, explodes from its fragile shell, catching the singularity survivors. Each slasher must now make a DC-12 deck save. 8, 17, 17, and 8. On a failed save, they take 17 acid damage or 8 on a success. Two slashers are eviscerated by the shockwave before being dissolved by the acid. The remaining two, on the other hand, cling to its unlife as precariously as their flesh cling to their forms. While all of this is happening, the two infectors flap their fleshy exteriors to reach the nearby bodies of fallen crew. Round 2, top of the round. Two leapers appear from the floor, jumping out from the holes in the structure in a burst of broken metal. The exploder inches even closer. Meanwhile, the remaining slashers get close and attack Isaac with their organic weapons. 17, 17, and 22. While bone and metal made little headway, one errant swipe ultimately catches the engineer unawares and deals. 9 slashing damage. Isaac moves out of the way of the whirlwind of blades, switching out from his force emitter to his trusty plasma cutter, aiming down the crescent armament and quickly popping a piece of heated metal at each necromorph. 
26 and 9 for 9 damage each. With practiced accuracy, Isaac successfully fells both attackers. Unfortunately, Isaac was too focused on the immediate danger. Noticing too late as his attention is pointed at the squelching of flesh and twisting of bone with the infector successfully turning the two bodies into a pair of new leapers. The long-tailed necromorphs crawl and leap to the best of their abilities with one leaper being able to close the gap enough to vainly attempt at a bite towards the armored engineer. Round 3. A series of loud metal clanging calls attention to the nearby industrial door. While closed shut, it is forced open in a storm of screeching metal as a large gorilla-esque necromorph bursts through. The brute has entered the fray. It pushes the approaching explorer to the side with its massive bulk and immediately reaches over with its long and muscled mass of flesh for a forearm. 10 and 22. Isaac dodges to the side, but his leg is caught by a loose floor grate, with a secondary fist smashing so close that he can feel the shockwave in his bones for... 14 bludgeoning damage and he is pushed out of the way. Isaac is surrounded by these flesh monsters on all sides. With a large brute within hitting distance, he readies his stasis module and releases a wave of gravitational energy that slows the nightmare creatures around him. They all must make a wisdom saving throw. 12, 18, 17, and 6, and the Brute, 16. One Leaper managed to move away from the stasis wave, but the rest are definitely slowed. Isaac takes the opportunity to gain some distance from the fleshy mob. In the chaos of it all, the Infectors inch closer to the next set of bodies, with the Leapers trying and failing to hurt Isaac, especially for those remaining slow. Round 4. The slowed Exploder and Brute close the distance while Isaac continues to reposition. The Leaper attempts to sneak in a tail swipe, but Isaac ducks low as he switches his plasma cutter out for the massive tube that is his force emitter. He turns on his heel and lines the Leapers and the Brute. Isaac squeezes the safety clasp of its charged and installed power nodes and pulls the trigger emitting a burst of thunder. Each creature attempting to resist the shockwave rolls. 21, 17, 6, and the Brute saves for 19. Isaac deals 18 thunder damage and 10 force damage. The Brute's heavy set constitution already allowed it to resist the force, and yet its musculature still shields it from danger. Isaac lets the force of his power tool push him into an advantageous position while he spots one infector turn a body into a new slasher, while another inches its way closer towards him. He barely manages to find his footing in time to defend himself from the newly minted Necromorph that managed to close the gap with surprising aggressive speed. Luckily, he deftly ducks under its swipe and manages to shoulder check an open mod Leaper, while the slowed one is easily dealt and parried away. Round 5. The Exploder and Brute close in on with the latter attempting a wide swing for... 15. But the Engineer easily ducks under the slow appendage while charging his power tools with stalled power nodes at the same time. He moves away from the small group that's forming around him while the Leaper and Infector try... 11 and 9 and fail to swipe at the man. Taking the chance to saturate the area in righteous thunder, Isaac releases another charged burst of concussive force from his power tool. Each creature in the cone makes a con save. 10, 17, 20, and 6. They take 29 thunder damage and 4 force damage on a failed save, with only one lone leaper remaining to stay in the fight. Isaac unfortunately miscalculated the radius of an exploder's burst of acid, as it catches the slasher, the brute, and himself in a sudden explosion. They, along with the surviving leaper, make deck saves. 15, 4, and 11 with Isaac rolling a... 5. The Fallen Exploder deals 23 acid damage on a failed save. The Leaper is fully dissolved into a non-functioning mass, while the Slasher is melted down to near bone. Isaac's armor managed to mitigate much of the corrosion, but the heat burns to his skin and the Brute remains unimpressed. In spite of its melted state, the nearby Slasher slashes wildly at Isaac for... 16, 11. To no avail while an infector moves to another body. Round 6. Isaac quickly switches back to his flamethrower power tool and moves away while charging its power nodes. While in front of the slasher, he makes sure the creature is fully melted down in flames so hot the grills underneath are heated to an incandescent glow. 
As Isaac moves away, the brute makes sure he does not get away unchallenged. 17, but misses completely. In the midst of this, the Infector creates another slasher and wastes no time chasing Isaac down, barely a few seconds after its unholy birth. Round 7. Isaac continues to move, trying hard to maintain distance from the Necromorphs. The Brute continues to slam down... 15 with its heavy fist, causing the entire chamber to rattle. The slasher is unperturbed by such power and takes a swipe at Isaac... Natural 1. Isaac drops a splash of fire behind him, creating a superheated wall of fire. The Brute is too slow to even attempt to dodge, but nonetheless resists the heat. In a strategic move, he charges his power nodes after firing, with the energy surging towards the wall. The Infector dashes away from this wall, but the Slasher has no such sense of self-preservation at all, as it walks right through the flames that have been charged with the node's energy. 11 fire damage and 6 force damage. The Necromorph stumbles out of the wall with deep burns and ongoing flames clinging to its exposed muscles. In spite of its burning state, it swipes down with its massive arm blades. 8 and 16, but scrapes harmlessly against Isaac's ribbed armor. Round 8. The brute drags itself towards Isaac as he maintains a distance from the creature. The flaming slasher continues his assault. 22. And catches Isaac with an errant bite in the weaker areas of the armor. 4. 12. Piercing damage. Isaac's concentration on the stasis doesn't waver as he charges his nodes and takes a primer position to saturate all three monsters in a blast of fire. Each one makes a deck save. Slasher 5, Brute 6, Infector 19. That's a total of 26 fire and force damage on a failsafe or half as much on a success, with the attack fully immolating the slasher until it ceases to move. Through the flames, the Infector tries to sting Isaac with its proboscis. 18 and 13, failing twice to breach Isaac's defenses. Round 9. The Brute slowly approaches Isaac. But the man blasts the beast back with fire and ensures the infector is caught in the blast. The two make deck saves. 14 and 16, and both take 16 fire damage, and yet the brute continues to absorb this heat through its tough hot. The infector, however, not so lucky. With just one brute remaining, Isaac tries to enhance his defenses by magnetizing the steel plates along his armor in a protective sanctuary around his frame. Round 10. The Brute continues to engage while Isaac engages in the boosters of his armor to give himself an increase of speed. The stasis is running out and Isaac knows he can't keep running forever. Round 11 Isaac continues to move away from the approaching Brute and quickly switches to his plasma cutter and charges its nodes. He fires two quick shots along the monster's joints. 15 miss and 30 hit. One shot bounces harmlessly along the creature's tough exterior, but the second shot burrows deep in the exposed pustules in its joints, dealing 16 force damage. The brute's aggression remains as Isaac fires another pair of shots at the creature, 20 and 23, and hits home for 21 and 12 force damage. Isaac's accuracy is rewarded as the brute is brought down to one arm. The creature drags itself along the metal floor with its one good arm, and at this point, the stasis finally fades. Isaac wants to finish the fight before the creature can deal too much damage and fire several shots. Ooh. 14 and 23. The creature's speed is still hampered thanks to its dismembered state, but the second shot dismembers it once more for... 25 force damage. In spite of its dismembered state, the brute lets out an explosive pustule towards Isaac. 15. The pustule misses the engineer. Isaac looks at the potential damage of its corrosive expulsion and panic fires in an attempt to push it back. 14 and natural 1. Isaac's resolve slowly wavers and moves behind the nearby computer pillar. Unfortunately, Isaac miscalculated the brute's true aggression as it crawls on its nigh vestigial hind legs and attempts to slam him with its massive forehead. Hmm, 24 and 25. Isaac is significantly damaged with 14 and 15 bludgeoning damage that pushes him back in the process. Isaac is worried and expends a spare power node to reload his plasma cutter. Luckily, the previous charge remained in the tool's nodes. Isaac attacks. 
25 and 30. He exhales and calms his nerves as he aims down at the exposed pustules of the dismembered monster. 22 and 13 force damage. As Isaac squeezes twice on the trigger, time slows to a crawl as his perception becomes razor sharp. He loosens his grip on the handle of the plasma cutter and lets the recoil compensate for the brute's pain response, firing the second shot with pinpoint accuracy at the remaining exposed pustule. The heated slug melts effortlessly through its fleshy exterior and finally brings the beast down for good. Quarantine lifted. The rolls were certainly in Isaac's favor for that one, but I like to think he was only a few bad rolls away from a really bad time. While I recorded this all in post, I did roll everything manually to keep the results. I hope you enjoyed the style of presenting the homebrew content. I'm pretty proud of this one myself since I made sure the subclass was more or less balanced. I even have a comparison document that lines up the engineer with the artillerist and battlesmith to keep from being over or underpowered. I'll include that in the Ko-Fi link as well in case you're interested. This wasn't the first time I presented the homebrew this way, but I did so in the hopes of you finding these videos more engaging. So if you liked it, it'd be great if you subscribed to the channel. It means a lot to us and it keeps you updated on any new releases. And hey, if you do subscribe, thanks a lot. We have fun here. Remember to share this video with your girlfriend and do check out this video on how I homebrewed Elden Ring's stat scaling to D&D. Until then, my wife and I hope you have a great day ahead.